Welcome back to the IBD School Basic Series. This episode, IBD School 105, looks at how IBD can cause problems in other parts of the body, beyond the digestive system. I would like to introduce my colleague, Kristen Boardman, a physician's assistant who works with our IBD group to specialize in the care of people with Crohn's and colitis. Welcome back to the IBD School Basic Series, episode 105. Today, we'll look at how IBD may create complications in other parts of your body, beyond the digestive system. Sometimes, living with IBD can really throw you for a loop, because despite the fact that it's called inflammatory bowel disease, it can create complications in other parts of your body as well. I just found out that I've got IBD, and now my doctor's telling me about all these other things I have to watch out for. I'm really scared. It can be scary when you begin learning about IBD. First of all, it's important for you to know and realize that most people with IBD will not develop any of the conditions I'm about to talk to you about. What I'm really hoping is that it will ease some of your fears. It's really important to understand how IBD can affect other organs in your body so that you can make sure to tell your doctor about any symptoms that you may be having outside your GI tract and then get the right treatment. Let me start with the eyes. It may seem strange to think that bowel inflammation can cause problems in your eyes, yet this can occur in patients with autoimmune disorders like IBD. Patients with other immune system diseases like rheumatoid arthritis can also have this happen. The good news is that less than 1 in 20 people with IBD develop eye problems. Furthermore, these problems can be treated with special eye drops that control inflammation. It's important to remember that if you develop vision problems or pain in your eyes, it's not something to be ignored because if it goes untreated, you could possibly lose your vision. Your IBD doctor or your eye doctor may use some terms you've never heard of before to describe the inflammation in your eye. Iritis is inflammation in the iris, and the iris is the part of your eye that has color like brown, blue, or hazel. Scleritis or episcleritis is inflammation in the firm white outer coat of your eye called the sclera. Uveitis is inflammation in both the iris and the part of your eye that is behind the sclera. Any inflammation in the eye is likely to cause pain and blurred vision. Usually, eye inflammation only happens when there's inflammation going on in the bowel at the same time. Every time I go to the doctor, it's like, what's next? What else do I have to think about? I know what you mean. Especially in the beginning, there's lots to absorb. Your body's immune system is attacking itself, and that can happen not only in the bowel, but elsewhere as well. Another of these places can be in the liver. About 1 in 20 people with IBD can develop a liver problem known as primary sclerosing cholangitis, or PSC for short. PSC happens when the walls of the bile ducts become inflamed. This can eventually lead to cirrhosis or scarring in the liver. Unlike eye conditions, PSC can occur when there is little to no inflammation in the bowel. So your IBD can be under good control and yet your bile ducts can become inflamed. Unfortunately, there's no effective treatment or a way to prevent PSC. A second liver issue is autoimmune hepatitis. This happens when the immune system begins to attack the liver similar to the way it attacks the digestive system in IBD. This can also lead to cirrhosis or scarring. Autoimmune hepatitis can be treated with medications like steroids and anti-inflammatory drugs. Cirrhosis of the liver from either condition can shut down liver function to the extent that a liver transplant is required. Why did my doctor talk to me about kidney stones? I'm thinking that you probably have Crohn's disease and not ulcerative colitis because kidney stones are much more common in people with Crohn's disease. 
This has to do with the fact that Crohn's disease causes patients to lose calcium, and calcium is necessary to prevent kidney stones. Kidney stones form when the urine becomes so saturated with a certain substance that no more of it can dissolve into the urine, like trying to dissolve too much sugar in your iced tea. The undissolved portion forms crystals and then clump together and grow into hard stones. In Crohn's patients, the problem is something called oxalate. This is produced by our bodies and we also consume it in the foods we eat. Normally, oxalate binds with calcium and is eliminated. But without calcium, this oxalate is absorbed into the bloodstream and deposited in the kidneys, where it forms into stones. The easiest way to treat oxalate buildup is with a calcium supplement or with oral and intravenous fluid to flush the stone through the system. Kidney stones may also be broken up with ultrasound sonic waves. What about osteoporosis? Is there anything I should be doing now to keep my bones strong? I'm glad you asked that question. We see lower than average bone density in about four to five out of every 10 people with Crohn's or colitis. Osteoporosis, or thin, brittle bones, is something most people usually develop in old age, but it can happen earlier in IBD. We call the early stage of bone thinning osteopenia, a condition that affects almost half of all people with Crohn's. And we use the term osteomalacia when bones are weakened by nutrient and calcium loss. Bones aren't thin, but weak. Regardless of the condition, there are ways you and your doctor can reduce your risk of fractures due to IBD-related bone problems. If you've not already done so, talk with your doctor about whether you need extra calcium and vitamin D, or if maybe a medication that blocks bone loss is right for you. Another condition most people usually associate with aging is arthritis. Arthritis is inflammation of the joints. Arthritis sometimes occurs with IBD, but what happens more commonly is arthralgia, which means pain in the joints. So these are different conditions. Arthritis is joint inflammation, and arthralgia is joint pain. Typically, when we talk about arthritis, we mean inflammation that can damage joints over time. While arthralgia causes pain, it doesn't damage the joint. Usually, arthralgia develops at the same time as an IBD flare. It can move from one joint to another. So for example, during one flare, you may have painful ankles. And during another flare, you may experience pain in your hips or elbows. Skin disorders are the next most common inflammatory condition that can happen with IBD. About one out of seven people with IBD may develop a painful skin condition with red bumps on the shins and ankles. This is called erythema nodosum, which basically means red nodules. This happens during a flare of IBD, so the best treatment is to treat the inflammation in the gut which also makes the rash get better. About one out of 20 people with IBD develop a skin condition on their legs or arms that starts off as a little bump, but then gets larger and larger, especially if aggravated. This condition is called pyoderma gangrenosum. The pyoderma part refers to the pus-like surface of the sore and the gangrenosum part refers to the black-blue edge of the sore. Without treatment, this condition can become worse and you can develop multiple ulcers on the skin. But if you catch it while the bump is small, prescription cream will usually clear it up. Why is my hair falling out? Otherwise, I feel good right now. I'm guessing that you may have had a flare-up not too many months ago. I say this because hair loss is usually a delayed reaction that can occur from iron deficiency or stress to your body brought on by a flare. Here's another fancy medical term. Telogen effluvium 
If you hear this term, it basically means hair loss or hair shedding. In general, the body sends nutrients where they are most needed, and that means that hair, as well as nails, are the last to be supplied. When nutrients are limited by any sickness or disease, including IBD, hair and nails may not be supplied with the nutrition they need for strong, healthy growth. Your teeth can also be affected by limited nutrition, steroid use, or ongoing inflammation. So you'll want to let your dentist know you have IBD. Actually, anytime you see a medical professional, whether it's a dentist, eye doctor, or any other specialist, be sure to let them know you have IBD and if you've had any recent flare-ups. Let me sum up all this information with a bit of an overview. As you know, your IBD is in your intestines, but your immune system is everywhere, and inflammation can show up in just about any part of your body. We call these conditions extra intestinal complications, which essentially means outside the intestines. It's believed that all of these extra intestinal complications represent an exaggerated response of your immune system which triggers inflammation in other parts of your body. Of all the extra intestinal complications, arthralgia is the most common. Joint, eye, and skin conditions often occur together. I'm sure after hearing all this, you're saying, stop the ride, I wanna get off. I wish that were possible. But I can say this, your doctor is there to help you and give you options and help you manage the ride when your IBD throws you for a loop. We'll cover some of these options in future episodes of the IBD School Basics series. On behalf of the University of Michigan Health System, thanks so much for watching. And remember, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask your doctor.